this is Marcelo Scambleri. I thought I would show everyone how to align and size a scope box because there's been a lot of uh, questions about it recently on the forums and through some of the Google searches I've done. And the question was, how do you make a scope box such that you are able to align it to an element or a grid? And then how are you able to know its size? So let's first get a little background on what a scope box is. Um, do this quickly and uh, show you some of the limitations of the scope box and then we'll get into how to actually align it and to size it and to know the size of it. So uh, the way the scope box works is in this particular case we have a floor uh, that is um, that is cropped out based on these boundaries and this is based on a scope box that was drawn uh, to bound between grid A and 2 and 4 and B. So I'm going to show you how to actually do that today. And this, this particular scope box is truly uh, 12 meters by 7 meters and it is aligned with grid A and 2 so it can actually just capture just this portion. And this is the example we're going to do uh, today. So let's first show you how that's done. I'm going to turn off these crop regions. So we start with a plan like this, just a much larger plan, but we just want to crop out between A and 2 and 4 and B. Alright, let me show you Let's show you the scope box. So if we go under view and we were to draw a scope box, okay, a scope box, if we want to draw it between A and 2 and 4 and B, right now we'd only have the ability to eyeball it into place. So we would kind of draw our cursor here and then we drag the bog out, box out to about here. Okay. So let's take this. This we actually want to be that 12 meters by 7 meters, but we actually don't know its real size. Let me, let me isolate the grids and these dimensions so we can just concentrate on that. And then we'll get back to the whole plan in a minute and isolate. Well, let's do that again. Actually, not going to edit this recording at all. So just bear with me if I make a mistake along the way. Here we go. Isolate. Okay. Now, in contrast, if we were to look just at a model line, a box, a box, if we wanted to just draw a box, it's much different than drawing a scope box. Because if we just want to draw a model line box, a uh, box on a model lines, we actually are able to snap to the grids like this. You see, and then it actually will make it the true dimensions of 7 by 12. And we know for a fact that this box that I just drew that's made out of model lines is truly 12 meters by 7 meters. And you can actually dimension it too. So if we went here and dimensioned it, we'd know this is 7 meters and this is 12 meters. There's characteristics of a model of model lines for make, that we made this box out of model lines that help us to uh, build a box like this because you're able to snap to these elements. Right? Uh, you could also in this one you're also able to use the align tool and you can align the edges to this one if you wanted to and do it that way. And you could build a box like that. That's all fine. <laughs> However, a scope box doesn't use the model lines. It is its own entity. So that would be perfect, but that doesn't happen. Okay, that's that's a wish list item that we should get. Um, what we have is a scope box. You're able to get pull handles. Oh, by the way, you can rotate it, and actually rotating so these are Stephen Stafford and others have mentioned that uh, you're able to actually rotate this into place by by inserting an angle here, typing in an angle, like, like so, 45 degrees or whatever. But you don't have that luxury when you actually use the translations of this. If you wanted to take this edge, you can't pull this and then type a dimension. You can't type 7,000 here, or yeah, 7 meters, or this can't type in 12 meters. So you're really stuck with uh, these very limiting tools when you want to work with a scope box. And I, I, Someone could correct me, but I think a scope box was originally intended just to roughly get a boundary around your uh, elements that you wanted to crop, but there actually uh, is a way to do it uh, that I'm going to show you in a moment. So let's go over one more thing. You cannot align the edge. You're not able to do that. You're not able to dimension to it, and so on. Uh, you're not able. This will not snap to anything. So the question is, how do we do it? Let's first start about measuring this. Okay? You don't have any. Um, 
properties up here that actually tell you the size of this. Unlike other crop um, views that crop, such as the uh, let's see here, such as the callout. Right? If you were to take a callout around here, uh, this would produce the same results. If I click on this, it's going to create this view that's cropped. Yeah. Uh, and what what this has, the crop view actually has a crop size box that tells you the width and the height. And that would be great for this because then you can actually type it in there, but it doesn't have that. So what you have to do with this is you have to play a little trick. And here's the trick. Here's the workaround. Ready? This is how it works. Not only can you assign this as a crop view, for a particular view to crop, but you can also place elements in there and, and, and assign those and crop them. And those are called uh, datum elements. So if we go back to here, reference planes that pass through here, and grids, grids, here is grids, grids that pass through here. You can take elements, these datum elements, let's make them longer so that you can show that they're going to get cropped. You can take a grid and you can assign it here under the properties. So you can pick scope box and you can pick, uh, this is scope box 8. You apply and it will actually, it'll actually crop it, the grid, to that box. What's more dramatic is the reference plane. You can do it for reference planes, and this is where the, the trick comes in. Okay, scope box, see how it cropped it? And I know these weren't very long. Do you see that little dot it puts there? That's what actually got me interested in this. Because I first thought, oh, there's no way to do it. But then I saw these little dots, and I said, what are those dots? Those dots are just a representation to say, this is where um, the extension will start of this particular crop on a, on a reference plane. Now, a reference plane is, is infinitely long and tall so this is just a representation of where it would end I mean where it would be cropped okay. but watch this if you take these and you assign it to the box like we did and then you turn it back off and say none there's a th what happens in Revit is something special these reference lines reference planes will actually physically now be cropped at the edge of the scope box and that's the key to this whole thing. Because now what happens is you, you can't measure an edge of a reference line. You can't dimension it. Because it is still in a reference a reference plane, excuse me, a reference plane is still infinitely long. It is just now just saying that I am just showing you the I'm just ending the extents there. But what you can do is take a model line and you can snap the model line to these edges. And a model line you can actually does have physical dimensions to it. You see? So when I actually eyeballed this, I actually eyeballed this about 13 meters and about 8 meters. Okay, but now what just happened? I am able to now find the actual length of this. It's actually 13 by 7. Okay? Now this will not be dynamic because if I pull this, uh, the ref this will not go with it. But you, s you do now have a way to measure it, even though it's not, um, it's not dynamic, which is a lot better than what you had in the past. So uh, there's a lot of things, you a lot of applications you can do with this now. Let's talk about aligning now that we have measured it. If you wanted to just center this, let's say you built a scope box that you like and you wanted to actually center it or align it, you now have the ability to do that because all you use is these model lines now. So keep the model lines in there. And if I wanted to just align this top edge of the scope box to grid A, all I do now is just move it. Just select everything, grab the edge of that model line, come down here and place it there. Now this is aligned on the A grid. Now if you want to align it along the 2 grid, then all you do is move here and move it again. Did you see what we just did? We just aligned that scope box now, um, the top and left edge with grid A and 2. Okay, and uh, one more thing, Th these applications are endless actually because if you wanted to, if you have this now and you like the size of it and you wanted to center it now, between all these grids, then you would just, uh, all you have to do is just draw some extra geometry here. This is the way I would do it. I would draw some model lines in here, and then I would use, um, I would come to the center now of this uh, model line, and then to the center of this one. See that? And then now you've aligned it in this direction between grid A and 4. Now it is now it is centered that way. Or you can center it in this direction you know, um, by, a, by 
a similar method, right? Um, so you have to get it. Uh, I think I'd have to actually move this over a little. Okay, and then I select everything again, including scope box. See, I move this here. Moves this one. I guess you could do both. Let's see how I would do both. Uh, maybe go here. Might put another model. Well, yeah, or you can do both. <laughs> Got it? So let's 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 now back up. Okay, so now you know how to align. The only other thing is if you just wanted to align, then you'd be done. Okay, let's do it again. If you just wanted to align between A and 2, you'd be done. But there's one more thing you can do, uh, which is, let's get rid of this. Okay. Now, the, you want to make this 12 by, if you aligned it to A and 2, now you'd have to do is make this scope box 12 by 7. And um, there's no real easy way to do this. You'd have to um, just basically drag these and eyeball them into place. But the, the, the thing now is that you're able to drag it into place it will not snap here, but you'll eyeball it, but then you can measure it to see if you got it. And uh, I've been able to give scope boxes within uh, 0.2 millimeters accuracy. Uh, so that's pretty good. So let's do this. So if I drag it, all I do is drag it, and I'll just keep zooming in, zooming in, and zooming in. And if you get in close enough, this line will actually disappear on you, but that's okay. Just take, just take the, uh, just take that arrow and best you can in there and that should do it on that side let's check it this one we'll get as close as we can and then we'll just keep zooming in right. now I know what you're saying this is not quite that accurate it's true now what you can do is because if there's a grid here you can actually take a model line and place it onto your grids that way when you select your scope box you can align it against the grid Alrighty, now, moment of truth. You ready? I'm going to slide these back out of place so that we see the method one more time. Okay, so what do we do? We're going to check if that is 12 meters by 7 meters, but we're also going to realign it. So what you do, here's the method again. Draw a scope box. Then go over here to reference plane. Place two reference planes in each orthogonal direction. Okay, don't do a diagonal because it won't snap. You won't know where that's at. Come here, change it to the scope box, whoops, the scope box, okay, so it crops, change it back to none, then it'll auto do it, auto um, prop it, and then come here to model lines, place, <laughs> pick model lines, one, two, okay, you see that, oh, 7,000, ooh, that's a, that's a beautiful thing, another beautiful thing, 7,000 by 12, we got the scope box the right size, now what we do is go move this into place, here, one more time. Boom. Okay. Erase all that junk <laughs> or that extra stuff, what I like to call sacrificial s elements. And then let's turn everything back on because now we have our scope box. And let's find the scope box. And let's call it something fun. Let's call it. Um, So then let's come over here to the view, and then we're going to crop it, and we'll be done. Let me go to scope. See, I made this one too. I will size you and align you no matter what. I will align and size you any way I want. <laughs> I think it's that one. There we go. See? It actually cropped it right on. Now you got a crop box that is, one, the size you want. I know we eyeballed it, but we're pursuing the accuracy of our, of our um, within a millimeter. And then we aligned it. We truly aligned it between 2 and A. And we got it to crop correctly. And we named it something we want. 
So that's how you align and size and dimension a crop, uh, align, size, and measure a crop box.